Help! I need to remove my activation lock. Hello and welcome to iPhone Black and White Troubleshooting, where we try to figure out what's going wrong with your device and get you fixed as quickly as possible. In this video, we are going to be going through and showing you every step that you need to take in order to get your activation lock removed from your phone. This is the more difficult way to basically get this done. If you have not watched my video on uh, Find My or how to remove Find My, if you're lucky, you would be able to do the steps there. I'm going to kind of cover that here just for uh, very briefly, but this video is dedicated specifically to showing you step by step doing this the hard way. And there's a couple things that you're going to have to have, so enough said, let's jump into it. Okay, so what exactly is activation lock and why is it synonymous with Find My? It's kind of confusing, but just think of it this way. If you're hearing somebody mention Find My, in essence what they're saying is activation lock. Activation lock is the whole reason that um, somebody can't just steal your phone, erase the phone, and then put their own ID on the phone and claim that it's theirs. Because once you sign into a device with your ID, it's now locked to that Apple ID. So the easy way to get activation lock removed, basically removing Find My, is by knowing your Apple ID and knowing your password. If you do know both of those things, your ID and your password, then you need to stop, go watch my video on removing Find My, and that is really all that you need to do. It's a much simpler way to do it. This video is dedicated to people who Maybe you don't know what your ID is because you don't remember. Maybe you don't know what the password is. Maybe you know your ID, but you, you don't know the password and you can't do account recovery to reset your password. There's a number of reasons why you might be in this situation, but if you are, you're in good hands because I'm going to show you step by step on what we need to do. And the last thing to kind of just understand about Find My, when you're, when you're talking about Find My, in a, in a way, they're also basically referencing, yeah, you know, if you lose your phone, you can go to iCloud.com and find it on the map. So it's kind of like, hey, find my phone or find my iPad. That's the idea in talking about find my, but just remember, find my and activation lock, it's one and the same. It's identical. So don't get too hung up on the terms. Okay, so before we jump into this and show you all the steps that you need to do, let's go ahead and preface everything that you're going to have to have, which is really not all that much, um, but you're going to need a device that you can access the internet with, obviously, if you're watching this, then hey, there you go. But what you're going to have to have is your proof of purchase. So let's assume... Um, that you bought your phone like four years ago and you can't find the receipt. It's gone. You don't know where the receipt is. It's, the reason it's going to be okay is because wherever you bought that phone, they would have a record of you purchasing it. So as, let's just say you bought it from a Verizon store four years ago. What you need to do is you would go to like that Verizon store. You would say, hey, I, this, here's my name. You know, I bought, you know, this um, iPhone. If you've, you know, got the phone, show them. They can get the serial number or get the IMEI number, put it into their system, and then they would have the ability to print out a receipt. Now, warning, warning, here's the thing. And this, this I can't tell you how many times that people probably, you know, they get screwed up on this. When the people at the store, wherever it is that you're going to get your receipt, when they print this out, for some reason, these stores are notorious for printing out uh, receipts that aren't really receipts. And so that you're not getting the information on them that you have to have. So you've got to listen to me on this. When you go to these stores and you say, hey, I need you to give me a receipt, that receipt has to have these things. It has to have 
the date that you made the purchase. It needs to have the uh, amount that you paid, but it does that doesn't necessarily have to be on there, but it's better if it is. So you definitely have to have the date that it was purchased. It's good to have the cost. But then here's the other things you have to have. You, you have to have either the serial number or the IMEI number. The serial number or the IMEI number. Don't worry, you don't need to know what the IMEI number is or what that stands for. Don't worry about it. The people at the store, they're going to understand. But that receipt has to have the date it was purchased and then the serial number or the IMEI number that has to be on the receipt. And it's better for it to also have basically any other details with it, like the price and then just anything else, like maybe the store's address, et cetera, et cetera, as much information as possible. Okay, I'm trying to really stress this. I'm not trying to make this segment really long, but I'm telling you now, too many people screwed this up. Don't just take whatever it is they hand you in the store, look it over got to have the date and then the serial number or the IMEI number. All right. I think I've stressed that enough. Okay. So as long as you've got your receipt, you're ready to proceed. So what we need to do, we're going to take a look at a few um, articles here, but it's also going to be the websites that we need to go to. So let's go ahead and jump to it. The one that we really need to get to here is how to remove activation lock again from support.apple.com. Now, this will take you kind of step by step of um, removing it. This um, is the article that I reference in my Find My video, how to turn off Find My, which in essence is turn off activation lock. Um, this is only going to work if you know your Apple ID and know your password. So if you're watching this video, nope, you don't. So now let's go ahead. We're going to get over to here. Do, 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 almost there. Okay, so in this article, how to remove activation lock, what we do is we go we go down here and Apple has kind of streamlined this, made it a lot simpler. So if you do not have the ability to turn off Find My the normal way, you will see right here, start a support request. You're gonna click that link. When you click that link, it will then open up this web page. When you get to this web page, it is going to say request activation lock support. And what you're going to do is you're going to put in your Apple ID. Um, and I'm sorry, you don't even need to, I, I take that back. This is not your Apple ID. This is just an email. It doesn't matter. So if you do not know what your Apple ID is, it's okay. Or if you know what the Apple ID is, but you can't get into that email, it's okay. All you need to do right here is you're just putting in an email that you can receive from Apple. So put in any email address that you can actually receive. I can still get into my iCloud one, so I just listed it here. This is my fake ID listed. So you're gonna put in your email address. Then the very next thing is you're gonna put in your either your serial number or the IMEI number. Once you do that, you're then gonna put in whatever their little characters here are. I don't even know what that is, good Lord. But anyway, uh, if you need to get a new code, I guess just hit that. There you go, that's easier. So you put in your information, you're gonna put in um, the code there, and then you're gonna go, then you're gonna hit continue. When you hit continue, you will then get an email sent to your account. So we're gonna go over into my iCloud, open up my mail, and we're gonna see right here, this is the email that you would receive. It just says, please verify your contact information. And it says to continue your request, please click this link or copy and paste it into your web browser, blah, blah, blah. All you need to do is click on that link. When you click on that link, it will then take you to the next screen. The next screen would then say, hey, we found your device. And what they're saying is, hey, okay, this is a correct serial number. Like you gave us the right serial number. So please verify the information below. So this is my test phone. This is my iPhone SE second generation. So we put this in here and you're just gonna hit continue. 
Now we get to this page. Once we're on this page, it will say, tell us how to contact you. And it's already going to list the email address that you listed before, followed by the serial number. You can't make these changes at this point. If you notice, it's all, it's grayed out. So you can't make any changes. So it's got that email you're listed. It's got the serial number. It's got what the product is. Put in your first name, you put in your last name, and then you've got to put in your purchase date. So whenever it is that you bought this thing, you just use the calendar, go back, just pick whatever the date is that you have on your receipt. Uh, where did you originally purchase your device? Let's just say it's Verizon. It's not where I bought mine, but if I just like to use Verizon as an example. So what was the country? Uh, it was, uh, oh geez, I'll just say America. I was gonna get cute and say Australia. Anyway, now you're gonna put in the store address. So it would be 2023 uh, E Street, who knows. Um, your store address too, that's optional. You're basically just putting in all the information it's asking for. That's all that you're doing. We'll just say Utah, who knows what the postal code is in Utah, I have no idea. The store city, uh, we'll say it was Salt Lake City and website. Don't worry about the website. You do, if you only need to put in the website if you actually made the purchase um, through a website. So like you made the purchase through verizon.com, um, that's fine. Um, which kind of brings us to the whole point of, okay, well, what if you did buy your device through a website, uh, like through Verizon, you didn't buy it in the store. It's no big deal. You still just need to contact whoever it is that you bought it from and have them hunt down and basically print out for you that receipt. So I kind of forgot to mention that before, but don't panic. If you bought it online from a trusted uh, seller, you would be able to go to them and they would be able to get you that original receipt for you. So let's just say that we did buy it from verizon.com. And then basically when it says, please share any steps you have taken to remove activation lock, the best thing to kind of put in here is, you know, try to use um, the find my uh, website, but unable to, and then whatever your explanation is, like, you know, you don't have access to the password, something like that, you know, whatever it is, um, you, it says that it's optional, but it really is a good idea to try to put something in here as to the problems that you ran into, um, trying to get this removed without, you know, do, instead of being able to do it the easy way, it basically is asking you, why couldn't you do it the easy way? Explain to us, please. Okay, so this brings us to sort of the last part here, and this is really the most important because this is the whole reason that you needed to get this receipt. Okay, so please provide your proof of ownership below, such as a photo or screenshot of the original sales receipt. Don't worry, it's not the original. They just basically want to have a copy of that receipt. The document must reflect the purchase of an Apple product and show the product's identifying information, information such as the serial number, the IMEI number, or the MEID number. Please do not include any exact files. Don't worry if you're uploading a screenshot, you're not going to, uh, don't worry about that. But basically that receipt that you had to go get has to have the serial number or the IMEI number or the MEID number, but usually the MEID is never gonna be on there. So I never uh, reference it anyway. But that is basically what you gotta have. Then what you need to do is you would just click select files and then the window would open up and you would be able to locate the screenshot that you uploaded to your computer. If you're using a computer, you could do this on like somebody else's iPhone or an iPad. Um, you don't have to use a computer, but wherever that screenshot is, you need to get it onto the device that you're trying to fill out this information with. And then once you do that, you would hit continue. Once you hit continue, it would then start like the process and there you go. Okay, so once this is all submitted, what happens? Okay, so the turnaround time on this is around five business days, sometimes less, sometimes more, it just depends on uh, the time of the year basically. But 
they will contact you at that email address that you've got listed and they will tell you whether or not they removed it. So let's assume that they do remove the activation lock. Okay, so what happens next? Well, it usually takes around five business days to get a response, sometimes more, sometimes less, it just kind of depends. Um, but they will email you and um, hopefully they were able to remove the activation lock. So if you get the email that says, hey, we removed your activation lock, you're halfway home because now all you need to do is actually erase your device and guys it's actually really simple to erase your device i know you probably if you're watching this means you can't actually get into the phone so if you can't get into the phone it's no big deal all you need to do is plug in your phone and to the computer and depends on if you've got a mac or a windows computer it's different ways to do it but what i would tell you to do rather than try to put in all the steps here i need you to go watch my video called um disabled you know if your iphone is disabled or you know you forgot your passcode and i'll try to link that video in here as well but i go through the steps are the exact same so if you watch that video i will show you the steps on how to basically erase your phone and that is all that you need to do because once the phone is erased it will begin the setup process and you will be able to get right back into your phone and set it up as though it's a brand new phone. It's actually a lot simpler than it sounds. So rather than try to cover all those same exact steps here in this video, because this one's already running long, just go watch my video on the disabled phone or forgotten passcode phone. And those steps will guide you right through on how to plug in your phone to a computer and then uh, erase that phone and then you can just set it up as a brand new phone. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that this was beneficial. I hope that this overview, you know, helped explain it. If it, and this is, this can be very confusing guys. So if you do need more clarification, watch the video again, or you can always contact Apple support and kind of ask them um, about the steps. Um, they're going to be kind of limited and kind of walking you through the steps because they're going to end up guiding you just to go to the website that I just um, showed you um, and uh, took you to. So just understand if you need clarification, it makes sense. But I, I hope that this video was beneficial to you. If it was, hit like, hit subscribe. Come on back, learn how to become an iPhone expert. And don't forget, send this video to your friends and family so I can turn them into experts as well. Alrighty, guys, thank you so much for taking the time, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya.